an ensemble dedicated to create an established web of love and interconnectedness through the universal language of music among diverse cultural groups in the DMV area. They envision a future where music serves as a powerful tool to break down cultural barriers, foster mutual understanding, and promote a sense of community among people from all walks of life. Well, I welcome that. And Sufi Melody has assumed a mission to foster unity and understanding among diverse communities through music with the inspiration from the inclusive tradition of uh, Sufism. They strive to build bridges by sharing music from various faith traditions and cultures with a particular focus on the music of uh, Islamic mystics and beyond. So, uh, Sufi Melody. Please join me in welcoming Anika Adams. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to thank you for that heartfelt uh, very warm introduction that you, give, that you gave me. I appreciate that. It is my honor to be here with you this evening as we commemorate the Rumi Forum's annual Dialogue Award ceremony. This evening, we come together to acknowledge the remarkable achievements of our award recipient, and we pay tribute to the remarkable 24-year journey of the Rumi Forum in promoting a culture of peace, religious diversity, and social cohesion. By facilitating meaningful conversations and fostering connections between individuals from various backgrounds, the Rumi Forum plays a pivotal role in building bridges and nurturing mutual understanding. If you look at your program, you will notice there is a QR code on the back. To make a contribution, simply take this program with you, and whenever you're ready, scan the QR code to connect directly to the Rumi Forum's online donation platform. Your support will enable the organization to continue their vital work, making a lasting impact on communities worldwide. We also want to see all of your photos and video from tonight's event. So if you are on social media, which I know you are, right, <laughs> please use the hashtag Rumi Dialogue Award. Okay, hashtag Rumi Dialogue Award. Now, without further, further ado, I'd like to invite Rumi Forum's Chairman of the Board of Directors, Dr. Ori Soltis, to deliver the welcome remarks. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> and welcome. Just in case there are a few of you who don't know for whom the Rumi Forum is named, Rumi, of course, was a very important 13th century mystic and poet. He is the author of the words of the second song that was so beautifully played by Sufi Melody. And as a mystic, he was simultaneously an intense Muslim 
and a complete universalist because in order for his soul to be filled with God, which is the goal of every mystic, he realized his soul had to be empty of self. And if one empties the soul of self, one realizes that perhaps the notion that only my mode of directing myself toward God is the correct mode is myself, my ego speaking, and not God speaking. One of my favorite passages from Rumi is where he writes, all religions, all this singing is one song. The differences are just illusion and vanity. So Rumi Forum inspires the name, or rather Rumi inspires the name of Rumi Forum. Rumi Forum is also part of a larger network of organizations called Hizmet. Hizmet is the Turkish word for service, inspired by an individual who was very much inspired by Rumi, as well as by thinkers from Socrates to Einstein, and his name is Fethullah Gülen. He is originally an imam in Turkey who has since 1999 resided in eastern Pennsylvania, but who by the 80s recognized that if the world is to become a better place, a place for our children and our grandchildren that is improved over the place that it is for ourselves, then the only way that can happen is if all of us work together, if all of us of diverse faiths and ethnicities and genders and races and nationalities all work together. And so the Hizmet movement inspired by Fethullah Gülen, Rumi Forum inspired by Fethullah Gülen, has as its point and its purpose to think, to talk, and to act altruistically with that kind of a goal in mind. To alleviate problems like ignorance by education, the Hizmet movement has established thousands of schools over 170 countries to alleviate poverty by social programs. It is engaged in all kinds of programs designed to do that in the United States, for example, as Thanksgiving approaches. The various Hizmet subs subsets work to create Thanksgiving packages for families who otherwise don't have access to those turkeys that we've all somehow come to associate with Thanksgiving. And strife <clears throat> can only be overcome by dialogue, the kind of programs that include iftar interfaith dinners, for example, or this kind of a program which brings a number of things together. Ultimately, of course, we are a diverse group and that's part of the point, but ultimately we're also honoring someone whose work could not be more relevant to Rumi Forum, to the Hizmet movement, to the kind of things that Fethullah Gülen has been teaching for 50 or 60 years because, as you will learn if you don't know, but you probably do, Micah has been engaged for decades in Jerusalem with Palestinian and Israeli kids singing together in Hebrew, in Arabic, in English. The Jerusalem Youth Chorus is a phenomenon in and of itself, so I can think of no one more appropriate for Rumi Forum in its work to honor than Micah Hendler in his work. And with that, I welcome you on behalf of Rumi Forum and would like the program to proceed. Anika, thank you. Okay, continuing with the next introduction. Aziz Abu Sarah is a peace builder, cultural ed educator, an entrepreneur. He's also an author, international speaker, and so much more. Harnessing the transformative power of travel, in 2009, Aziz co-founded Mejdi Tours, originators of the dual narrative, and a leader of responsible travel. Aziz's educational conflict, educational and conflict resolution work throughout the world has earned him the titles of National Geographic Explorer and Ted Fellow. He was named one of the 500 most influential Muslims in the world by the Royal Strategic Center in Jordan each year since 2010. He is the co-founder of Interact International, a nonprofit advancing sustainability, education, and cross-cultural connections. His book, Crossing Boundaries, A Traveler's Guide to World Peace, was released in July 2020. 
Aziz continues to be at the forefront of peace and reconciliation efforts in conflict zones, having worked in 60 countries, including Afghanistan, Colombia, Syria, and the Balkans. Aziz has spoken at numerous international organizations, tourism conferences, corporations, and universities. He is also the recipient of numerous awards, most notably the Goldberg Prize for Peace in the Middle East from the Institute of International Education and the Intercultural Innovation Award from the UN Alliance of Civilizations and the BMW Group. He, has, he was also recognized by former United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for his work in peace building. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Aziz Abu Sarah. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for this very nice introduction. Uh, now I feel a lot of pressure. Um, now, uh, I'm very happy to be here, to be with you, to be with Micah, my friend, receiving this award. And as said earlier by Ori, I think I can't think of anyone more deserving today of receiving this award, especially with everything going on and so much uh, fighting, so much suffering. Um, so much death happening in Israel and Palestine today, I think it's extremely important that we see an example of what is possible and not just what is happening in the world. And what Micah is doing is exactly that, is what is possible, what the future can hold for us. Um, I'll start by just saying some of the things about Micah that are important. He graduated from Yale, music and international studies. He, um, he was named in Forbes 30 under 30 for music. He uh, writes for Forbes as well. And he's got a million of those things. But I want to I wanna start saying how we, we met. We actually met in Jerusalem just about a decade ago or so. And at that time, I just had started my company. He's just been starting his chorus. Um, and we met listening to music, going to uh, at least the first conversation I remember. He remembers one earlier that I don't, apparently. You spoke well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we went to listen to a common friend playing music, and we met there. And that's when I learned about the chorus and learn about how the Jerusalem Chorus is being built. And it was just in its beginning. And it's beautiful to watch something from its inception and then see its success through the years. And that's exactly what happened, where I got to watch this organization go from just a few kids singing together and Micah trying to bring it um, all together and figuring out how to make it work to eventually becoming such an amazing uh, organization and, like I said, a place that brings hope, especially in, in these times. Um, I got to see it also how it influences not only these kids, but also other people. I got my travelers to go and start listening to, to these kids and not just listening to the music, but also meet with them and hear their stories and hear how they're able to have dialogue, how they can disagree and not hate each other and how they can go back and forth and then sing together and let the music help them get closer to each other. And I could talk to my travelers and ask them, what did you think of this? And it was always, always a highlight of a trip where, you know, Jerusalem is a, has a lot of things to offer. Um, it's been mentioned a couple of times in holy books, I heard. <laughs> but yet, when you ask the people who come, what is the highlight? It is not the Mount of Olives. It is not this or that church. It is not so many beautiful sites they visit. It is that encounter, because there's nothing more holy than that encounter of these kids being together and listening to each other and learning that we are not enemies. Uh, <laughs> then years later, we met again here and another work that Micah is doing, and I ended up doing, kind of coming together, is through his work with Braver Angels. Uh, Braver Angels is an amazing organization that brings Americans 
who lean, whether Republican, Democrat, or whatever else you want to be, uh, to have a dialogue together and work on the depolarization in our community here in the U.S. And I found myself reaching out also to Braver Angels as I brought my travelers here to learn about the polarization that happens and how can we work on it and found that Micah also is working with, with the Braver Angels. We follow each other. Um, and that's also important, regardless if you're talking to kids or talking to adults. Micah working here as a director of music with Braver Angels, realizing that it's not just sitting and talking, dialoguing, even if we adults. It is singing together. It is uh, working on songwriting together, figuring out how we can understand each other, not only in these traditional means of dialogue, but in innovative way through music. Because that helps us see, again, the possibilities that we don't. Um, but through all of that, I would say the most important is, Micah, your ability to reach across any line. And whether it is with Israeli and Palestinian children, whether it is with Republicans and Democrats and conservatives and liberals, uh, or with just other people, um, such as you know, working from kids to working with Sari Nuseba, who is one of the Palestinian um, top community leaders, peacemakers in the country, and being able to go and share a keynote speech with him to the East-West uh, Philosophers Conference. Uh, things like that, you, you just don't know where you're going to find yourself when you allow, when you allow yourself to reach to anybody and to, to reach out to anyone, to engage with anyone. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy I got to see it. Uh, and I know how important that is because of my own life as well. I, I grew up in Jerusalem. My brother was killed when I was 10 years old by Israeli soldiers. And I grew up very angry and very bitter. And it is people's ability to reach across that had made a difference in my life. I went to study Hebrew first time when I was 18, and that's when I went through a transformation. And it was a couple of things that helped. One was my Hebrew teacher who decided that I was the only Palestinian in that classroom among mostly Jewish students, and that I needed someone to make me feel welcome. This just small act of kindness that she would walk to me smile and tell me in Arabic that I was welcome. And that made me confused because I've never been treated like a human being uh, from the people I saw as the other. Those kind of small acts of kindness make a huge difference. And the second thing was when we couldn't talk to each other much and we couldn't really get to know each other, was it through music that we connected in the beginning in that classroom? I'm a big fan of uh, music called country western music. Any, any fans here? Yeah. In Palestine, you get none. It's, uh, it's not famous music. And in my Hebrew class, I remember listening and uh, telling some students I like country music. And I was surprised that a couple of them said, oh, we like country music, too. Now, not many Jews also like country music. It's something Palestinians and Israelis agree on. But there were like a couple of us who enjoyed Johnny Cash. Yes. And it was through listening to Johnny Cash that we became friends. And again, it's, it's the music. It's being willing to go beyond seeing the other just as an enemy. And it's through simple things that sometimes we realize that our identities are not only Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Arab, Israeli, Palestinian, all these uh, identities we have, we can go beyond those identities. For many people, Micah and I are enemies. He's Jewish, I'm Palestinian, you know, we, how could we be friends? And yet, I don't think we've ever seen each other that way. I don't think, that, to be honest, the first thing when I think of Micah is not that he's Jewish, yeah, that's part of his identity, but he's a friend. That's more important. And yet the world wants us to hate each other, we often taught, told that, oh, you must be enemies. And it's so important that we stop seeing each other as us versus them. We are not on opposite sides. We are on the same side, the same side of peace, the same side of justice, the same side that's trying to bring freedom, justice, peace for everyone in our communities. Uh, we're not opposing to each other. 
And so I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me to come and uh, be able to introduce you with this award. Like I said, I, I can't think of someone who deserves it more, and I'm very grateful to share this time with you. Okay, I believe the team is preparing the video. We are about to watch Micah in action. This is a short video on the Jerusalem Youth Chorus. In 2014, one of the wars in Gaza and there were rockets falling in Jerusalem and there were teenagers being targeted and being killed on both sides. So we in the chorus are trying to create an alternate reality. I live in Israel. I'm an Arab. There's Jewish people. Like that's what I know. But I don't. I never talked to them. I never knew them. I never knew what their opinion. Particularly in this neighborhood, Shuafat, where Muhammad Abu Khader was from, and one of our singers was also from, like around the corner from his house. And we happened to have a rehearsal the next day for our first tour, which obviously I had to be like, please don't come if you're going to be in danger. And she said, well, I was sitting in my house and listening to all the gunshots and smelling the tear gas, and I was just kind of sitting in my living room going crazy. And so I left and I walked down the street and the soldiers tried to stop me, but I ran away and here's exactly where I want to be. insanity and all of the just awful physical and emotional violence that was happening around them that this was a place where they really felt at home. journey that I have been trying to follow as best as I can to find and create those spaces where people can actually experience that beyond that as he was talking about the idea that maybe there are other ways of being um, and other ways of being together that don't necessarily need to be defined by what other people think separates us or what maybe actually separates us but there are other ways, um, other layers of human experience that people can choose to draw on if they want, sometimes. The beginning of that quote has been my email signature from the first time I had an email signature, and it's still my email signature if any of you have received an email from me. Um, and it takes a lot of humility, and it takes a lot of listening, and it takes a lot of actual openness to hearing in order to really create those bridges. So that was the second thing. And then the third 
was after it was then 11 o'clock at night and I played this music for them after I had learned what drives people to become suicide bombers even if they don't want to and aren't gonna do it. Um, and I love the way that Sufi Melody specifically approaches what you do and like taking like Kava Nagila but doing it in your own style in a way that like also was kind of a like surprise. There's sort of like sneak intro and then it was like, oh, and actually we're doing a klezmer tune. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is so perfect and, and really goes to what music can do. That like music can, in a lot of ways, when, you know, when wielded uh, wisely, can catch people off guard. It can get past some of the armor that we put up. It can get past some of our preconceptions in our minds and go straight to the heart. Um, and so, Music also is something that we are hardwired as humans to experience and to experience in community. There's something about when we sing together, we're actually hardwired to trust the people we Micah's good. If I can follow along, Micah's really good. <laughs> All right. What a beautiful performance. I don't know about you, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this evening's event. I just want to offer a gentle reminder before we depart. If you have enjoyed this evening and, and the all of the celebration and the great work that Rumi Forum continues to do, uh, and you want to support that work for years to come, please do not forget. Make a donation, all right? Don't leave your program behind. Take it with you, all right? Please make a donation using the QR code. It will take you directly to the platform so that you can make a donation to the organization. As we draw near the end of this magnificent celebration, it's my pleasure to invite to the podium 
our executive director of Rumi Forum, Ibrahim Adli. So a uh, few acknowledgments. Uh, one is that, uh, let's remember, we have two uh, focal points of tension uh, nearly chronically that uh, face us, that keep facing us in various cycles. One is tensions at home here in the United States. The other is tensions in the Middle East. And tonight, I am so glad that we have recognized the world work um, of a visionary who is truly engaged and dedicated to bringing empathy and understanding to both of these very challenging contexts as a, uh, through music and through his work uh, as a form of healing and building shared uh, humanity or building ways to remind us our shared humanity. And um, a note for you, Aziz, thanks for being uh, a powerful voice and an exemplary voice of restraint and um, about how to navigate these very ne uh, challenging moments and, uh, and using every platform, particularly your Twitter account, as far as I see, uh, in, in being, bringing all, all the nuance um, despite a climate that calls the other way around. So I truly appreciate um, your work in that direction. And uh, I wanna uh, invite our uh, staff and volunteers just to make themselves a little bit more visible, please, uh, so that, um, okay, they are somewhere, and, and our volunteers here. Um, and truly appreciate uh, all, all the work that you have done to make this gathering a reality. And another round of applause for our talented Sufi Melody, please. Yay! And, uh, and to our great MC, Anika. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, um, to you all uh, for, for being here, bringing your wonderful selves into this room and, uh, and uh, just strengthening our convictions that this is the way to go and being a powerful voice in the most peaceful, uh, yet in, in the more, most uh, vocal and meaningful sense that we refuse to be taken hostages by a climate of conflict and friction. Thanks for being the advocates of that. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in our Silver Jubilee Rumi Forum's 25th celebration uh, year's anniversary next year. Thank you so much. I think the Rumi Forum is doing extraordinarily important work. I think there is a real need, particularly in the kind of times that we're living in, whether here in the U.S. or in the Middle East or literally anywhere, seemingly, that people are rapidly losing the ability to disagree in a way that doesn't lead to violence, like to, to disagree in a way that can be constructive, to disagree in a way that can lead to greater understanding as opposed to less understanding. Um, and, and what the Rumi Forum is doing is really, in, at least in my mind, trying to create spaces for people to lead to understanding, even in disagreement, um, which is just so critical. 
It's an extraordinary honor for me to be receiving this award from the Rumi Forum in recognition of the work that I've been doing with the Jerusalem Youth Chorus and also with Braver Angels and a variety of contexts, but particularly in this time to be receiving an award for this work when seemingly everybody on both sides is turning their backs on the people who are trying to create shared space in the name of zero-sum games. Um, that everybody in their pain is saying, no, only I matter right now. And so for, for the Rumi Forum to have decided courageously in this time to not say, you know what, maybe there's a better time for this award, or maybe there's someone else who should get it right now, um, is just a huge vote of confidence in the whole project. Um, and it means an, an extraordinary amount. I think receiving this validation from the Rumi Forum and having really the alliance of the Rumi Forum in this work in so many different contexts, whether in sort of the Israeli-Palestinian sphere or in the interfaith sphere or in a sort of more political depolarization sphere, in all of those areas, getting to work with the Rumi Forum is just an amazing source of strength and, and a real validation that there are people from so many different parts of society, parts of the world, parts of the whole faith ecosystem who are so dedicated to this work. And it really makes it harder for people to say that there's nobody to talk to or there's nobody else who thinks your stupid opinion. You know, you're like, well, actually, we have a whole community. We have a whole coalition of people who are dedicated to the idea that there must be a better way to do things than what we're currently seeing. Thank you. Thank you.